Our council candidate coverage continues tonight, starting with Larry Sauer. Sauer is a longtime Lloydminster resident who prides himself on being an active community member. He served on city council for one three-year term. Well, Larry, there are a long list of candidates vying for six spots on city council. What do you think distinguishes you and makes you different? My previous career as a high school teacher and, uh, and, and administrator at Lloyd Mitchell Contra Mitchell High School. Um, you know, over the years, now I see those, those students who are now business leaders and who I talk to all the time, who are involved in various community uh, organizations, charitable organizations, who I talk to all the time. Uh, so that, and, and I think um, the other thing that people have told me, and, and when I first initially ran for my first term was that uh, they thought I was a person with a reasonable voice that would give them, that would consider everybody's opinion. What do you think is the biggest issue facing Lloyd Minster right now? And if you're elected to another term, how would you go about to uh, change it or try and fix it over the next four years? Well, I think for me, it's not a matter of the, of the biggest issue. W when you're on council, I, you know, I've had the opportunity to talk to lots of different individual citizens who phone me, email me, or talk to me in person, uh, groups and organizations. So, you know, depending who you talk to, those are the burning issues for those people. So for me, I, I have several priorities that I want to either continue or to, to bring forward. And uh, you are a current councillor, Larry. What do you think you bring to municipal politics and what will you continue to bring forward? Interacting with, uh, with ministers, with people with influence in government in terms of, of, of funding, uh, grants, those things. Uh, I think that has definitely helped me that I can bring that and I now know these people. Uh, and can go forward in talking to them about more of the issues that we have and where we can direct administration to go. Well, thank you very much, Larry. That is Larry Sauer vying for his second term on Lloydminster City Council. Our second candidate tonight is Erwin Workentine. Working in the transportation field, Workentine believes he can offer new strategies to our infrastructure and transportation industries. Now here's Elise Cox with Erwin Workentine. There's a segment of us that are uh, a youthful, uh, yeah, there's a youthful resurgence from uh, the candidates running. And um, just my, my experience uh, and living in many corners and seeing many corners of this country, I can bring uh, I, that, uh, that knowledge and that background as what worked for those communities and what didn't work for those communities, I believe can be a, a big asset to once uh, some of those decisions need to be made. And what do you think the biggest issue in Lloydminster is right now? It's the rate of our expansion, I think, is the, the biggest issue. Now, you, you can look at uh, what needs to, to happen for that expansion. Um, roads, um, sewage, uh, and uh, a closer look at um, the uh, value of the houses that we're building here. I mean, you see a lot of expansion in terms of higher-end houses, but we need to make sure that we're also providing for the uh, families who, who don't uh, earn those wages. And in the next four years, how are you hoping to take the necessary steps to tackle that? Using my, uh, my background, using my, uh, my knowledge in the transportation field, uh, definitely uh, will be a prov uh, big asset. Uh, but in terms of, of the other things, we need to start talking to the other governments. We need to start talking to the provincial governments of, of Saskatchewan and Alberta. And we need to be talking to the federal government saying, hey, we're growing fast here. I mean, uh, our, exp our, our growth rates are are quite large and we need to, to tell them say we need some help here. Well thank you for talking to us Erwin. That was Erwin Workington for City Council. And we will introduce you to the final two council candidates in the running tomorrow night, Alan Kayford and Cheryl Ross. And you can get the chance to meet the candidates face to face next Thursday night. On October 18th, the Chamber of Commerce is holding an all-candidates forum at the Civic Center. The Lloydminster Chamber wants to hear from you and what questions you would like to have answered. Tomorrow is the deadline to submit your questions. Submissions are anonymous. To submit your question, you can simply log on to the Chamber's website.
Well, the cold, wet weather didn't stop hundreds of local kids from coming out to experience a teepee raising, an annual event hosted by Lakeland College. Stefan Katchmar has the story. The kids came bundled up in their warm jackets and were able to take in a unique celebration in Aboriginal culture. We were very glad to see so many children here. It's nice to be able to share culture and to share experiences. Um, I wish that the weather had been a little bit better for the children. The teepee is an important symbol of native Aboriginal identity. It takes planning, preparation and some work to be able to create this structure. I guess it's recognized uh, as a the original mobile home, uh, our home of our ancestors, and uh, it can be seen by all when you drive in. The relationship between the city of Lloydminster and Cree culture is strong. It was cemented after a treaty honoring partnership and commitment was signed in July. It's a recognition that long ago people lived all over this, uh, this territory. And, you know, for people to live in a, in a skin tent in the wintertime, is quite an accomplishment. This is the first of several Aboriginal events that will be taking place during the academic school year at Lakeland College. Stefan Kachmar, Newcap News. Well, many of us are still coming out of our turkey coma, and on this week's Beyond the Classroom, we take a look at a time-honored tradition of the Lloydminster Catholic School Division, helping celebrate the Thanksgiving long weekend with a little bit of fun. Let the games begin. It all starts with a way to work up your appetite. Hundreds of kids, parents and grandparents hit the ground running for the annual turkey trot. The turkey trot is my favorite part. And the prize everyone is hoping to pick up. 15 turkeys for 15 lucky families. This is one of those community events that we, uh, we have here at St. Joe's that run in all of our schools for that matter. That, uh, that really support that notion that we're all together, that we're all one family, and uh, it's a great way to get together. The annual pumpkin pie luncheon and turkey trot has been going on for so long, organizers can't even remember when it started. But with the division's booming population, every year the event gets even bigger. Participants pack the gym, everyone eagerly waiting for their name to be called. Some have horseshoes. Second time I won it. And others just happy to take part. Just to see all the kids, uh, how a beautiful day to go for a walk, and, and I got lucky and got a turkey. A great way to bring everyone together, and for 15 lucky families, a chance to take home the supper staple of a Thanksgiving meal.